Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from LearnColorGrading.com and welcome to a new episode of the show that I have no idea what this show's name is. I really have no clue, but as promised before, we're going to be talking about uh, real life examples of editing and color grading using DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to figure out a name for this segment later. I don't think it's a big segment to the point where it should have a name, but so today we're going to be talking about uh, not a tip per se, but basically about editing in Resolve and how it's different than editing in Adobe Premiere. Now, I'm not going to be covering everything. Um, this is just a fast look for people who are used to Adobe Premiere and they want to move to DaVinci Resolve for editing. So you're coming from Premiere, you're used to the way Premiere works and you want to move to DaVinci Resolve or at least you want to try DaVinci Resolve to edit and you're not sure things look a bit different and behave a bit different than Adobe Premiere. So we're going to be covering uh, some of the top differences between uh, Resolve and Premiere, you know, just to get you started with DaVinci Resolve. So let's start. I think we should start with one of the main differences between both softwares. Now, in Adobe Premiere, you have your tools. So you have the ripple tool, the cut tool, and you have all your tools laid uh, in front of you. And whenever you choose a tool, this is the current tool you're using right now. Uh, however, Resolve works a bit differently. Uh, you're, be, you're gonna be confused because once you get into Resolve, you're gonna notice that there are no tools. You only have these three options here as your tools. And of course, you, when you look at this, this is the razor edit mode. Then you have the uh, trim edit mode and the normal edit mode. And you're not sure what these things are. Now, Resolve makes things really simple for editing. So you basically have two modes only. And once you choose a mode, your tool uh, changes its behavior based on the location of the tool on the uh, clip itself. So for example, let's start with the normal edit mode. So now I'm on normal edit mode. And this means that if I bring the uh, cursor here next to the edge of the clip and I just move it, I'm simply trimming the clip. Nothing weird is happening. So I'm just going to undo. And if I hold the clip from the middle, I can move it left or right. Okay. And so if I move it to the left, I'm actually trimming the clip on the left, but I'm creating a gap here to the right. So this is the normal edit mode. However, if I move to the trim edit mode, now this is a bit different. Let me undo here. When I'm on the trim edit mode, I have multiple tools in one tool and the entire timeline changes its behavior not to create any gaps in the clip. So now if I'm in trim edit mode and I just bring the cursor to the right here and I pull to the left, okay, I'm actually trimming this clip, but I'm pulling this clip closer to the left so I can close the gap. Let's undo. So now this was the behavior of the clip on the edges. Now, if I move the same tool towards the bottom of the clip, so if I bring it here near the bottom of the clip, now I have this icon. So now if I hold the clip and move it to the left, I'm trimming the clip on the left side, but I'm also extending the clip on the right side not to create any gaps. Let's undo. So this was the behavior if the uh, mouse is near the bottom of the clip. Now, if I put the mouse near the middle of the clip, like here, for example, and I drag, I'm actually extending the clip from the right and cutting it from the left or the other way around. So it's very simple. The trim edit mode tries not to create any gaps in the timeline. So it's always going to be closing gaps from all sides, okay, making it easier for you to work with your film. Even the behavior of your shortcuts changes. So I'm just going to zoom into the timeline here. I'm going to uh, choose the normal edit mode and I'm going to place the playhead here. So now I'm going to hit W. This is my shortcut for uh, trim end. And notice what happened. We just trimmed the end of this clip, but nothing happened to the rest of the clips. This clip is where it was and we have a gap here. Now I'm going to undo and I'm going to choose the trim edit mode. And now I'm going to use the same shortcut exactly. So I'm just going to hit W and notice what happened. We just trimmed this clip, but at the same time we closed the gap. So these are two different edit modes entirely. And even your uh, shortcuts will be affected by what edit mode you're in right now. Now, the second thing that usually looks weird for Premiere editors when they move the resolve is the key framing. Usually in Premiere, we have a dedicated uh, key framing and effects tab. So basically you change the property of your effects and you add the key framing on the same uh, window. However, in Resolve, it's a bit different. To control my effects or any parameters, I have to click on the inspector here, and this is my effect panel. 
It's as simple as that. However, I can add keyframes here. So for example, I'm just gonna add a keyframe here. And I'm gonna go up to this point and just zoom in and I'll have another keyframe. However, I cannot see any representation of my keyframes to the right here. To see my keyframes, I'm gonna have to click on this small icon on the clip itself. And now I have my keyframes down here. And if I needed to edit the properties of the keyframes themselves, I can simply click on this icon here and now I have my keyframe editor. This is one of the most important things because I remember when I first moved from uh, Premiere to Resolve, this was like really weird for me. Let's close this and just remove our keyframes. Then, in Adobe Premiere, we're always used to uh, reduce the quality of our preview so we can play things uh, smoother and faster. Uh, you cannot find this option on the monitor here the same way you'd have in Premiere. You're gonna have to go to Playback, Proxy Mode, and change your Proxy Mode from Off half resolution or quarter resolution, which is basically the same as dynamic quality with uh, Premiere Pro. Okay, another weird tip, which is really weird, but I met some filmmakers who were asking me this question, where can I find the color effects in the editor? Because they're usually used to the same workflow with Adobe Premiere, where you go to your effects panels, drag an effect, uh, does maybe like three-way color corrector, add it to your uh, clip on your timeline, and then you can have the properties for this particular effect. So when you go to effect library, of course, there are no color effects because this is DaVinci Resolve and we have an entire dedicated color tab. So all of your color effects are here. So this is like a huge effect control panel with a lot of effects, like it's really advanced. And so you don't really add an effect, uh, a color effect to your clip. It's just simply there when you go to the uh, color tab. So let's come back to edit here. Then you have rendering. Now in Premiere Pro, we're all used to rendering. So basically you choose an in and out points and then when you hit enter, you're rendering this part of the timeline and you can choose whether to render parts with effects or with no effects. However, it's a bit different here. You can still do the same, but for clips. So let's say that my machine was unable to run this clip here with certain effects and I needed to render this effect. So what I can do here is simply to right click and go to render catch clip output. So uh, when I clicked it, nothing happened here because I'm not enabling cache in my project, which is a bit weird. So to be able to render certain uh, clips, to, you know, for preview, I'm gonna have to go to playback, render cache, and I'm gonna choose user. So now all the effects here are controlled by the user. And you can see here that now we have this uh, red line on top here. Of course, this is rendering in the background. So I don't have to pose or anything. Uh, I'm just gonna go edit my clips and just finish my project while it's rendering in the background. And the blue parts here are the parts that are rendered. The red are the parts that are not rendered. And yep, so now we have this part rendered. So now if I need to render this clip, I'm going to right click now and choose render cache clip output. And again, now I have a red bar on top and it's just gonna uh, render the clip in the background while I can just finish my edit. And of course in Adobe Premiere, you have uh, folders for your clip management. So you can just right click and create a folder at any time. Now here it's a bit different. This part to the left here is where you have your folders. So I cannot mix my folders with my clips. So for example, if I right click here, there is an option to add a bin, but the bin will be added to the right here. So maybe we can call this just leave it to bin one now. And now I have the master bin and the new bin. So the folders are not mixed with your files, which is, I think is really neat. However, we also have smart bins. These are bins that automatically create themselves based on the metadata you add to your files. So I can simply come to media here and I can, uh, you know, choose uh, all the files and I can add any tags to my files uh, through the metadata tab here. And when I come back to edit, now I simply right click add a smart bin, and now I can add all sorts of rules. So any clip that have the word face, and that is uh, longer than a certain length that was shot with a certain camera should be in this bin, which will always update automatically, which is fantastic, frankly. It's, it's really easier to work this way. However, it takes some time getting used to this workflow. And of course, in uh, Premiere, after you're finished, you're gonna have to go to File, I guess, Render. Um, I just have a shortcut, so I can't remember the exact menu options, but I, I think it was File, Export. But here you have the Deliver tab. So there's an entire tab dedicated for your uh, export where you can hit this Edit button to see your timeline. 
and uh, you can choose all your options here. And the nice thing here is that you can add a render queue inside Resolve itself. So you don't have to move to another program to handle your render. Uh, you can simply just add all the properties you want here and click add to render queue and uh, you it, it will be added to the right here so you can have like four or five uh, different versions of your clip so maybe like a very high quality and a proxy and maybe a cut down version and you can render them at the same time you know using the uh, render queue so you don't have to use an external uh, program for this and one more thing if you want to add uh, uh, your clips your timeline in adobe premiere we usually have the uh, drag video or drag audio uh, controls down at the at the source monitor however here it all depends on the uh, selected track so for example i only have video one selected now so if i click my film here i'm just going to be adding video one however if i have audio one selected also uh, of course i can't because there is no audio track here but let me look for a clip with an audio track i think it's this one yeah so now when i click on now this clip have both uh, audio and video tracks so now if i want to add uh, audio and video now i i'm selecting both and if i simply drag my clip here so i just added audio and video let's undo uncheck audio i'm only adding the video undo i'm just going to check audio and now i'm only adding the audio without the video uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty simple way to adding your, your files. And you have the uh, contextual menu to the right here where you can insert, override, triple, uh, fit to fill, or place on top. And these options will always be affected by your current selected target tracks. I'm sure there are a lot of other things that I didn't mention here. Uh, this is like a fast uh, look and just a fast video that might help you using uh, Resolve uh, more. Uh, you know, coming from a background where you've been using uh, Premiere Pro for a very long time, just like me. You can tell by my voice that I recorded this the second day, but I forgot to record it yesterday, frankly. Uh, if you like this, please uh, like, subscribe, visit us at learncolorgrading.com, the free guide, and at Film Simplified, where you can find advanced courses.